This right here is a common plastic single gang nail-on electrical box. You've seen these before. I'm sure that I've installed hundreds of these over the years of my building and remodeling career, and they're perfectly acceptable by code. Everybody uses these, but I can't stand these. I don't like these. I loathe these plastic boxes. And I determined here on my own home edition that I would use no plastic boxes at all, none. Instead, I have used four inch square metal boxes with plaster rings. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about what I like about these metal boxes and what I don't like about these plastic boxes. I'm not trying to convince you that these are better, though they are. Uh, I just wanna show you that there is an option and there is some logic to my decision. To begin, there's the matter of accessibility. It's much easier to arrange wires and make connections in a four inch by four inch opening than it is in a two inch by three and a half inch opening, which is standard with the single gang plastic boxes. Then there is volume to consider. The basic plastic box has 18 cubic inches of volume. There are deeper plastic boxes available with cubic inch volume up to 22, but that's it, 18 to 22 cubic inches. On the other hand, a one and a half inch deep metal box has an interior volume of 21 cubic inches and a one half inch raised plaster ring adds 3.5 cubic inches for a total of 24.5 cubic inches. That's more interior space than you get with any plastic box. And for even more interior working space, a two and one eighth inch deep metal box with a plaster ring gets you up to more than 30 cubic inches. All those additional cubic inches give you more room for wires, wire connectors, switches, and receptacles. This is especially nice when you have bulky receptacles or switches like you see here. No cramming needed. Another plus for metal boxes is that they have a much higher fire rating. I directed a propane torch inside this plastic box for less than 30 seconds. Metal boxes don't melt like that. Next. It's not unusual for the typical number six machine screw to strip out when attaching switches or receptacles to a plastic box. The typical fix is to use a drywall screw or sheet metal screw. But attachment screws rarely strip in the threaded holes that are in metal plaster rings. You can torque the screws right down for a solid attachment. In the unlikely event that a number six machine screw does strip or cross thread in a metal hole, it's a simple fix. Just retap the hole for a number eight machine screw. That electrician's tapping tool you see there is at least 40 years old and has proven to be a very useful tool. Another nice thing about the four inch square metal box is that it can be easily positioned anywhere between studs, like you can see in this picture. That one by four board is cut to fit. Then I use my trusty old Craig jig to put in the pocket holes. To get the wood support block positioned back from the face of the studs just right, I use this little homemade jig. Here you can see how it is positioned. A length of board like you see here is used to gauge the height of the wood blocking and then the electrical box. I have another length of wood for getting all my switches at the same height. Here's a close up view of a metal box nicely wired, ready for a plaster ring and receptacle. I secure the metal boxes to the horizontal blocking with three number 10 by three quarter inch pan head sheet metal screws. Unlike nail on plastic boxes, which often wiggle around, these metal boxes are solid. This picture shows the green ground screw that absolutely must be used to ground any metal electrical box. Here you can see two metal boxes that are positioned for wall lights on either side of the mirror that will be over a bathroom pedestal sink. And here you can see a roomy metal junction box with no wire cramming needed. So let's talk about the price difference between plastic boxes and four inch square metal boxes. A typical plastic box like this sells for around a dollar, one dollar. But my metal box option requires a lot more parts and the price is a lot more like four or five times more. 
On my house edition, I have 45 metal boxes for switches, receptacles, and lights. So, instead of paying $45 for the boxes, I probably paid a couple hundred bucks. A definite drawback to using metal boxes with plaster rings comes at the drywall stage. The two pan head screws that secure the plaster ring prevent the drywall from laying flat. So I have to put a divot on the back of the drywall where the screws are. Also, cutting the drywall around plaster rings can be a real pain. A roto zip tool won't work here. Here's a rather poor drywall cutout around a plaster ring. Cutouts like that create more work when it comes to finishing. But if you're comfortable finishing drywall, it's not a problem. After pushing the wires into the box, I put a wide piece of tape over the opening, then finish with joint compound and paper tape as needed. Here's an example of what every plaster ring opening will look like when I'm finished. And that's it. Now you know all the good, the bad, the ugly, and the beautiful about using four inch square metal electrical boxes instead of plastic. Thanks for watching. Hit the thumbs up if you would please, and I'll see you in the next video.